Okay, this is going to be a basic how-to video of soldering. Going to demonstrate attaching a wire to a battery connector. It's just a basic technique, but once you learn the basics, you can apply it to other areas of soldering you need to do. I'll show you what we're going to be using today is flux. This is RMA flux. And it's just a little applicator bottle for it. This is a acid brush. It's uh, very good for cleaning flux after you're done soldering. Just use a little alcohol on the tip of it. The bristles are usually much longer, about an inch. I trim them down because it makes it easier to clean because the bristles are a little stiffer that way. And next, we'll be using these little cutters. I uh, won't actually be using them in the video, but this is what I used to trim wires with. It cuts much flatter than a standard set of uh, cutters because it has a nice flat bottom on the back. They're about six to eight bucks if you can find them and they're pretty handy. Makes a much better connection with a uh, and they cut good. And here is a wrench and just use it like a clamp. Open it up, put the part in, close it down and hold the parts in place for me. Now these are a set of wire strippers. These things are designed for aviation military grade wire but they also make a civilian version a company made called Ideal makes these uh, they're called Strip Masters and you can go to Lowe's or Home Depot or similar stores and get their civilian version they will trim up to a 12 or 10 gauge wire they're much cheaper than these they're about 30 bucks and they're not needed but they're pretty handy to have uh, if you have a lot of wire to strip but like I said you probably won't need these I use them as a clamp, uh, the whole wire and stuff in place. And they are uh, pretty easy to use. Like I said, if you want to, you want a spring for a pair of these. They're, they're easy to use. Just spring loaded. They clamp down, hold the wire, and then pull off the insulation. And like I said, all I do is open them up. I can put a wire in the end, and it holds it in place while I'm tinning or soldering it to a component pretty handy for that. And here's the soldering iron. It is a Weller soldering iron. This is a WES51 model. That's what we have here at work. Uh, very good soldering iron, but it is more costly than standard HICO or team check points that you can get at A Main Hobbies or Tower Hobbies online. And about $50, $60 more. And you have to find them at a electronics place or online. And you can uh, find them if you really want to get it. I'd just rather use the Heiko. But I set it at 650 degrees and that'll be the temperature it stays at the entire time I'm using it. Uh, I hardly ever change it from 650 degrees because you're using the proper tip. That's usually sufficient. Okay, now it's time to tan the connector. Apply a little flux to where you're going to be making your connection there. Then you're going to grab your tip, your soldering iron, and wipe the tip off. Most of them come with a little sponge that you get damp, or you can use a paper towel that you've gotten damp, or a washcloth that you've dampened. And when you get it wiped off, it'll make it nice and clean. And then you just apply a little solder to the tip. So it's getting frayed here. So a little bit of solder, you don't need a whole lot. That's all you need. I'm just going to take it and apply it to the spot and wipe it across. You'll see it start to melt on a little thin layer. That's all you'll need and you're done. 